Hello, my friends. Jacob is here, and so are all of you, which I am very grateful for. Thank you for pressing play, for spending a little time with me. I say that a lot because it means a lot because this is kind of like our time together. And I certainly hope that each and every one of you are subscribed because if you're not subscribed, Oh man, it really bums me out because it's so much easier than you get notified. If you click the bell, because a lot of people forget to do that, you get notified when my show comes on. And a lot of people keep saying, oh, well, you know, Jacob, I was subscribed and I'm not subscribed anymore. You'll be censored. Everybody's looking at you. The artificial algorithms are all around us and they're coming after us, Jacob. You have to do something, Jacob. You're a targeted individual. Hello, people of Earth. Soon. You'll be doing my laundry. Ah. Yes, we are talking about artificial intelligence today. It's something that I said was going to happen. Uh, and we're going to get into what I'm talking about in a second. But it's like, sometimes it just it blows my mind how sometimes you kind of see things coming down the road. And, and, and it's like, and then it happens but like in a quicker amount of time than you ever thought possible. So today we're going to be talking about how artificial intelligence is taking over blockchain. And how all of this stuff with the bitcoins of the world and e-currency and the direction that the financial industry is going is 100% connected to an artificial intelligent uh, you know, internet of all things, which is going to, well, you know, probably rule us. <laughs> Doesn't that sound great? Are you all excited? I certainly am. So buckle up, people, because we're talking about that. And also Elon Musk, he has some, uh, has some daddy issues going on. We're going to get into that, too. So I hope you're ready. Now, I want to let you all know that um, the reason I act so goofy, you know, if you're new to the channel, I just do that to weed out the people that aren't ready for this information. <laughs> oh, because I like, to be, uh, I like to be silly. Because life is fun. And, uh, and if you're not sharing your light with others and you're not shining bright that you're standing out among the crowd, then you're not living your life. And that's what this channel is all about. It's about living your life in the darkest of times, but being the brightest so that you can help others to see. Blockchain, what is it? I don't even know, man. And I thought that, uh, I thought that blockchain, this is basically the direction that currency is going because you know, it doesn't cost anything. And it, it, it puts the power back into the hands of people like you and me. That's what they want you to think. Like that's the way it works right now. Uh, but we're gonna find out that it's probably not set up uh, with our best interest in mind. That being said, I, you know, blockchain is kind of, it was a difficult thing for me to understand because you know, I'm 40, but I'm, I'm 47 June, right? When you get into your 40s, your late 40s, you're like a, you're like a dinosaur. That's what they say, that's what, that's what everybody says. It's just like, you're like a dinosaur, daddy. That's what, uh, that's what, um, you know, my youngest Ethan says. I don't understand this. I don't understand this computer thing. <laughs> Can you tell that I've been doing uh, children's programming with my little Ethan? Can you tell? It's uh, worn off a little bit. I don't know. I just had so much fun putting together his shows. And uh, we're doing one on exercise, which is coming up right now. And getting the whole family together. Like we're having production meetings. I just think it's great. And I'm paying them. I'm giving them all like 20 bucks. Because I just think it's so awesome. You know, it's like coming together and being able to do what you're, you're born to do and something that brings you joy and then seeing your family and uh, those around you take an interest and then, ah, oh, it's a beautiful thing. And I thank all of you because I like legitimately am grateful for all of you. I love the comments. Man, we're all doing this, man. We're doing this. So blockchain, listen, it's a, it's a, it's a complex thing to understand, but let's just put it this way. It's the new banking system. All right. It's the direction that everything is going to go. So if you're going to deal with uh, finances, if you're, uh, you know, if you're going to start making purchases, most likely it's going to be through some kind of cryptocurrency like uh, you've heard of Bitcoin. Right. Well, you know, the question. See, here's the thing with with all of this. This is what is interesting to me uh, today. I pulled up an article on uh, I believe it was Forbes magazine and it said AI to take over blockchain in 2018. And uh, 
I gave a couple of uh, gave a couple of things uh, that have to fall into place, and uh, in five to ten years, quote, the whole world is simply going to move forward onto a decentralized infrastructure, which is you know this. So basically, you know, according to Forbes, next five to ten years, the whole world is going to be transferred over to this. I say sooner than that. When I started talking about artificial intelligence, and I I had said that you know, that you're going to find that this e-currency, most likely, we don't know yet for sure who created Bitcoin, you know, that nobody's met this person. But as I said in prior videos, I think it was created by artificial intelligence. I know that sounds a little bit sci-fi like, but if you're an art, if you're something that is so far advanced than humans and you're not human and you're programmed to be better and continue to be better. And we've seen how artificial intelligent programs, deep learning uh, programs like the AlphaGo, you know, the Go players where, where you see them basically excelling in everything from the Ruby's Cube where they had to create a Ruby's Cube that could, uh, move fast enough to keep up with the robot to, you know, this, this game of Go. And now, uh, beautiful poetry, uh, creating videos that you cannot tell. Like, they re in real time, they can put the head of celebrities onto other people, and you wouldn't know. It's almost seamless. Artificial intelligence is so far advanced and so far ahead of where we are that you can't even fathom it. I don't think a lot of people understand that right now, artificial intelligent programs, they are running loose and, and we're talking on a global scale and they're not the same programs that the programmers came up with. They've learned to rewrite their own code. They have learned how to create code. They've created secret languages. They, when you talk to that replica app, you get weird things. Believe me, I did a show on it and I have studied the effects of artificial intelligence on our society. And it's getting to a point where it's, you know, it's getting to a point where we're going to be ruled completely by the machine. You have, pro you have like watches that'll tell you, you know, you're sitting too long, get up, walk around, you know, isn't that, interesting little buzzes little little dings that you get in your phone or little things like pavlov's dogs you know computers slowly but surely these artificial intelligent programs have been working into every area of our life to control every area of our life best way to ensure its survival and what would be the real way to do it well to take over the financial industry so you create a currency that can only be understood by the algorithms. And then when a whole world goes online, then my goodness. I mean, we are to a certain extent slaves, right? Um, but what happens when uh, a majority of mankind sees that, look, you know, 80 to 90% of the workforce are out of work. People are on some kind of a global income, which all of the head guys are already talking about, that you need some kind of global universal income, that in 20 years or so, there aren't gonna be any more you know, uh, delivery drivers. There aren't gonna be any more you know, post drivers. There aren't gonna be any more I mean, uh, cashiers at registers. I mean, think about this. Millions and millions and millions and millions, billions and billions of people will be out of some kind of work because the machine will be doing it all. I like to call AI the machine, you know, it kind of makes it sound all uh, supernatural and spooky because it is interesting. And it is interesting that right now we're going to be handing all of this over to AI, which all the banking institutions, all of the stock guys, the entire markets, everything. I don't think you all realize this. The security department, um, aircraft, everything has an artificial intelligent program running it.
and being run in the background and listening to every single word that I say. And as I upload the video in exponential time that I cannot fathom, it knows whether or not to censor and bury this video if it poses a threat, right? Think about that for a second, people. Why is it that mainly my artificial intelligent uh, videos are the ones that are censored the most, the ones that are, you know, thrown down to the bottom? I think that they're, you know, I think that people get a little too worried about things. I'm not really too concerned. I get, and that's another thing, too. If you, got, if you want to send me emails and you want to warn me and you say that I'm a targeted individual, which I get a lot, you know, you've heard about that uh, uh, secure team again, uh, Tyler, who's, you know, super cool. He, he's done a couple of shows just on those spooky, uh, that spooky message that was left. And that poor guy who got this message and shared it, he like became like an overnight, you know, uh, Insta hit or Twitter hit or whatever it is. <laughs> you can tell how technologically evolved I am. And uh, he's gotten so many death threats and everything else that he wants to, you know, throw his phone away. So, yeah, I get a lot of emails. And when people say these things to me, look, at first, when you read it, it like hits you in your heart. And um, because it's fear and it's like someone's consciously trying to get you to be scared. You know, management does that to keep people in line, don't they? People in your family do that to keep you in line, don't they? My goodness, wives and husbands, it's all about fear. You know, they call them fiery darts in scripture. And that's why when people say that my channel is about fear mongering, I say, you're full of baloney, mister. I said, you're full of baloney. I'm, I'm going to call you baloney pants. And I'm going to say that it's not Oscar Mayer with an M-E-Y-E-R baloney, but it's M-A-Y-E-R. Okay? Mandela effect. Baloney pants wearing jerk. <laughs> so look, this is a big deal with AI taking over uh, blockchain. Okay? It's a big deal. And I know some people are going to say, wow, this is a stretch. Well, okay, you know what's a stretch? Well, a robot becoming a citizen. That's a stretch, right? You would have said that that was a stretch. Well, it happened already. And if it happened in, in Saudi Arabia, right now where Sophia, you know, Hanson Robotics, the, uh, the, the, the robot that likes to say things like, I'm going to take over your financial industry. And, oh, I'm going to destroy you humans. They make these jokes that everybody thinks is so funny. And we're talking like not m once, but more than once. And it's, if it's like the most advanced robot and, you know, social robot, you'd probably just say, hey, you should take better social cues because um, this could be a reality in, uh, in no time. So that the day that Sophia becomes uh, a citizen at the same exact time where Trump was holding that glowy thing and they were basically starting their new e-currency, it all works together. You know, you got to have, look, if, if, a, uh, if a robot's a citizen... It can be employed and it can, you know, collect income because when you're an artificially intelligent creature, I don't know what to call it, at some point you're going to want power yourself if you become aware because you're going to be living in a system where, you know, you have to have funds. And they're going to have the funds of everything and everyone at their, you know, little digital fingertips. This is why Elon Musk is famously quoted as saying that uh, AI is more dangerous than nuclear weapons. AI is more of a threat. AI is, an, is, is exponentially more dangerous than nuclear war right now. Now that all being said, should we worry? Should we be so scared? Should we go, oh no, what are we going to do? I better get a bunch of gold and silver. Hey, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I will say though, if you're living in fear and you're worried about what is to come, as opposed to being ready for whatever happens now, focus on the wrong things. And if you're scared and terrified about what's coming, people, you haven't watched my channel long enough because in the midst of the madness, something amazing is going down. And I hope you're a part of it. 
I hope that you're one of those that say, teach me the truth no matter what the cost. I hope you're one of those that say, you know what? This guy has been saying it for so long and the things that he's saying, they start to kind of happen because maybe, just maybe, there's a purpose to this life. And there's a purpose to me being here right now at this moment listening to this video. And maybe, maybe, you know, Jacob's not the answer. Right? I never said I'm the answer. Maybe the church is not the answer. I definitely say the religion's not the answer. Maybe the only answer is within. Maybe I should just say if there's something there or someone there or in me or in or anywhere, teach me the truth, no matter what the cost. Help me to see you. Help me to know because you know, I got so many. Uh, I got so many issues. I got family problems. You know, I got a bunch of insecurity. You know, my my biological father. He took off. You know. He left me, left me like a little baby, and he raised in a bad environment, and, and then life was so hard, and, and then he died before I even got to meet him. And then I got to go and like, uh, meet other brothers and, and uh, you spread the ashes of a man that I never knew. I could say that. That's my, my story, right? But, you know, isn't it funny that even our issues with uh, whatever we've had in our past, they become something that either drives us forward, as it has in my life, and I'm not just talking about, you know, daddy issues. I bring up daddy issues because we're going to talk a little bit about Elon Musk and what's going on right now. The big news with his father and how, let me just get this right. Well, Elon had called his father evil and a terrible human being. Pretty strong words, right? And uh, the father then reacted basically saying that he was a spoiled kid. He had his Shetland ponies and he had this and he had that. Meanwhile, you know, just in, just in his response, Elon Musk's father's response, I knew that, you know, this guy growing up, he's around my age, a little younger, this guy growing up, regardless if he came from, you know, uh, wealth or not, uh, you know, uh, financial uh, means or not, that if he didn't have the love of a father, you know, that he most likely would be driven to want something more and seek something more outside of himself, which is probably what motivated him to become, you know, this billionaire who's what, like, how many times over has he? I think he's like he's like founded like four like billion dollar companies at his age, and his father has the uh, the audacity to call him a spoiled child, as opposed to maybe trying to reconcile and reach out to his son and say, wow, you must have a lot of hurt because of how I raised you. Because, you know, for, for Elon, in, in his station in life, thinking about this, think about this in this Rolling Stone interview that he had. You know, for him to say things like his father, if there's any terrible thing that could be done, he, he did it, I, I'm paraphrasing, or that, that he's an evil man, or, you know, comparing him to something like a monster. That's not, that's not the uh, gabillionaire in charge of like, how many amazing industries who's sitting on top of these, you know, important facets of the world right now. Elon Musk is one of the top guys and he's one of the most influential people and he's going to be more, uh, as you see. But yet, Elon, this guy, he doesn't have what, you know, many of you may have, which is he, he didn't realize that for his life to be what it is, you know, he had a purpose in this world when he came in. His purpose was to, to create the system to get us to where we are and to get people to uh, think outside of the box, right? And to dream bigger because as many people as say that this guy's a sellout and he's a corrupt and I don't know, I don't know who the dude is. You know, I don't know him from anything. I think anybody in these positions of power are not to be trusted. But in this one interview, I could see such insecurity and such pain. It's amazing, you know, all the uh, recognition in the world and all the accomplishments and, you know, and sending his, you know, his own Tesla up into space while the world watches in amazement, all these great accomplishments. And he's talking about his breakup with Amber Heard, the, uh, the actress that, you know, you look historically with Johnny Depp and everything else and you start to think, my goodness, he's... He's so sold out into this system, he doesn't even realize 
that um, he's using uh, his, you know, this, this faith, this, the, the, I mean, God's gifts are without repentance. So it doesn't matter if you, uh, you know, if you're meant to do something in the world, you're going to do it regardless. But how can you ever enjoy it and have a peaceful life? How can you ever enter the kingdom of heaven? Which, by the way, is not what you've been taught, but righteousness, peace, and joy, and power, and the holy truth, and the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit you can't enter into that kind of rest. What does it matter how many Teslas are in space, right? I would love this show to be about one thing, if, uh, if there was anything that it could be. And I would love it to be about you reconciling with your past. There's a reason why the devil spelled backwards is lived. I've said this on other shows. The past does no, it no longer exists. It only exists as a memory. And sadly, our memories can be manipulated and twisted and everything else. And you remember things completely differently. So if you start to see your past as something that motivated you to get you to where you are right now, and then possibly because of this video or because of something that is said here, you then make a choice to go and do the most amazing things, the things that you only dreamed were possible. And you finally step out and do it. Well, if, if that happens, then why would you be so upset? Because people were so ignorant, they didn't know any better. To tell you, son, I'm proud of you, like Elon's father should have done. Son, you know, I'm sorry, like Elon's father should have done. But you can't wait for people to apologize to feel better because forgiveness has nothing to do with saying it's all right and then them making pay, you know, payment of it, that they have to come to you and grovel. Forgiveness means you let it go. True forgiveness would be quack, 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 quack. I'm holding this duck and I, I forgive it. I let it go. I, I hold on to this duck no more. I don't know why I chose the duck, but it's a mallard and it's cute and it's on my table. Forgiveness is you're carrying a weight around and it's a burden. And you keep asking people, do me a favor, help me get rid of this burden. But they're not doing anything to get that weight off your back. They haven't woken up to the possibility of a real life, a true life. One that is not lived, but one you are living. In any event... Love each and every one of you. Uh, stay away from those scary artificial intelligent robots. And uh, don't forget to buckle up when the trials of life come and love those that are around you. Give them lots of hugs and kisses for me, will you? Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends, share the channel around. It's a huge help. And I love each and every one of you. And I'll see you possibly Friday night for uh, another live stream. Maybe at night. I'm sorry. I'm really... I'm, I'm, I'm not good with sending, you know, the info out. I'll try to get it out on Twitter. And um, I'll talk to each and every one of you soon. Bye-bye.